guys, I'm sorry to say that when they just, it's all true. It's all true. I am a professional yapper. All right, hello all you lovely people. There's been a slight change of plans. Last week, there was a bit of a, a drama between myself and a couple big influencers on the Twitter platform. Oh bother, here's another one of those Twitter videos. Of course he's rambling upon that again. Now, I, I know, I've done my fair share of comment and tweet reading videos. Just uh, do me a favor and let me know in the comment section if it's a bit too much, thanks. But regardless, apparently calling Modern Warfare 3 a mess is enough to bring back good old infamous Ghost of Cope from the shadows. Woohoo! I just had to let you guys know because I've been blocked by this guy for nearly two years and he finally scattered out of the gutter to unblock me, quote tweet my Modern Warfare 3 is a mess take to his followers, and then he reblocks me so that I cannot defend my own take, nor see that he even responded to it in the first place. He took advantage of Twitter censorship and secrecy. I only found out Ghost of Hope here did this because my friends brought it up to me in the middle of a Rainbow Six Siege play session. Shout out to Dutch Gang. To my surprise, I get home after a hard day at work to then be notified by my friends that apparently my tweet blew up and that that's all they've been seeing on their Twitter timelines. Pure raw unfiltered Matsuki hatred. I'm sorry to anyone that had to see that. But anyways, the point of today's video is not to actually send hate back to Ghost of Hope nor Bob Network UK and all their individual followers that may have sent hate my way. No, 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 no. They're cringe. You you, in fact, would be cringe if you sent the same level of hatred back their way in retaliation. Don't do that. Instead, the point I'll be making in today's video is whether or not this type of behavior should be tolerated in the Call of Duty community as a whole. You shouldn't have to defend me because I'm Matsuki. No, we should be shaming this type of pettiness because it is true extremist behavior. Call of Duty may have toxic roots back in its OG days where profanities were screamed over the mics, but these people are all grown up. These two guys are probably older than me, and this is how they act outside of video games themselves in public spaces where others are trying to actually discuss legitimate opinions and criticism. When you have someone like Ghost of Cope, someone that's blocking the very people he finds funny, something's not adding up. He's putting on a facade. He didn't actually find my tweets funny, he blocked me over them. So that means he's being insincere. He's telling his followers that I'm not not a real fan of Modern Warfare 2 because I didn't play it long enough, even though I'm level 900 and probably have over 20 days of playtime in multiplayer alone outside of shipment. He's telling them that I'm an Infinity Ward fanboy, yet I've clearly shown my distaste for Modern Warfare 2's early live service service. I hated shipment's return in Season 1, then I talked about what was wrong with Modern Warfare 2's perk system and how I would fix it. In these next two videos, I had pointed out how no one likes this perk system at all. And then I tried to identify Infinity Ward's thought process behind this design. I tried rationalizing it so that I could pick it apart and show them where they went wrong. I then made a video explaining why COD events suck now and how Fortnite does events infinitely better. I made a video about why Tier 1 is better than Hardcore, so when Infinity Ward had announced that they were bringing back a lesser skill mode, Hardcore, and replacing Tier 1 with it, I was rather disappointed. Not just in Infinity Ward, but also the vocal COD community that was wanting hardcore back because they couldn't hit their one-shot headshots in tier one mode. <laughs> At that point, I really wasn't happy with the content we had gotten, and I was getting angry over the fact that the third-person mode was removed, and that the only update to perks that was made was a time change. They had five months to change the perk system since the beta, but instead they just flipped a switch five months later, reducing the charge time of the perks, which was not an issue people had with the system in the first place. The main problem was that the tier 2 perks were unlocked later instead of off the bat. And to be honest, tier 3 unlocking later was alright with me because they were already like OP perks. Also, there was how they called shipment and shoot house quote unquote new maps when they were not new. <laughs> so I made a video setting realistic expectations for season 2 and ranted about the definition of new. Then right after that, I talked about how greed in relation to our vault edition tier skips were a complete scam because they changed how tier skips worked in Modern Warfare 2. They forced
forced us to spend all of our 55 tier skips in season one. In the previous two CODs, we could save our tier skips for future seasons, but they stopped allowing that in Modern Warfare 2 and onward. Then I made a video ranting about how cosmetics have gone overboard in an Infinity Ward game. Infinity Ward would previously stick to a more world-grounded theme, but that all changed in Modern Warfare 2. It took all the way until season two reloaded for me to start making positive videos around Modern Warfare 2. So calling me an Infinity Ward fanboy after pretty much eight straight videos of pure dunking on the game's design decisions, leadership, and monetization is Mr. Ghost of Uneducated Cope here, trying to deceive and tarnish my name among his little bubble of sheltered echo chambered fans. And by little, I mean 63.1k followers. Yeah, you can probably see how this is such a big problem. He's an influencer that's now this large. To top that, this guy is a leaker, meaning the majority of his followers found him through the leaks he was providing, not the content of original tweets posted by him himself. <laughs> and for some reason, to me it seems like a lot of leakers think these followers are there for them, which gives them just such a big ego boost to the point you actually have users like Ghost of Shame here sending unsugarcoated hate mobs at videos to dislike bomb them. Real mature for someone that just laughs at my tweets during Vanguard's life cycle, huh? I was getting 84, 136, 90 to 51 views per essay style video back then, but him retweeting this got my specific essay video about him to 444 views at the time, and with that, an all-time high of 70 dislikes to 21 likes. This video, however, did not get me blocked. He saw it when it came out, he thanked me for the attention, sent a hate mob, and then he decided to block me five months later over saying that Vanguard's Blitz mode should be replaced by 12v12 Team Defender, cause that's all it really is. You know, cause the spawns don't really flip. There's too many players on most maps in Blitz. Team Defender is literally just that. No spawn flips and dedicated protected spawns. Hi, uh, quick side note here. Unfortunately, it looks like I have been wrong this entire time. Team Defender is a completely different mode. Unfortunately, no one pointed this out and not even I knew until now uh, while making this video while looking for the actual gameplay of the game mode itself. The actual game mode I was referring to was Frontline. Yeah, so this is the same mode I was talking about. It's just protected spawns. Anyone behind, I guess, the point on the left side of the screen of my character, that's all protected, so you won't die within a spawn like this. The game mode is Frontline, not Team Defender. I'm sorry. This was the last tweet I sent, so you tell me if this was block-worthy. I have no clue how a tweet like that got me blocked, so maybe it was the video? Like, let's just say hypothetically, he really did hate me making a video debunking a lot of his Marvel for 2019 claims and argumentation. Let's hypothetically say that this guy- Oh, wait. We don't even need to because he's done it himself. If we go to my Modern Warfare 3 is a mess quote tweet he made and look at the replies, Harvey Jet talks about how he hates IW stands glazing over Modern Warfare 2 when MW2 spat in our faces, yada yada yada. But then here's Ghost of Hope replying to that guy with a, this guy made a YouTube video calling me toxic because I kept laughing at his takes during Vanguard. Like he just brings it up out of nowhere. It makes me think that I really did get under his skin. No one's asking, but he brought up a totally different conversation that once again paints me in a bad light for his own echo chamber. It's another coal added to the fire. And by the way, the video I made itself was pretty tame. In the intro, I even said, so who is the ghost of hope you may ask? Well, he's a guy on Twitter with almost 13k followers. And as a disclaimer, he is not an evil person that needs to be silenced or anything like that. Of all honesty, I agree with a lot of his takes, but also I disagree agree with quite a few too. Some of those takes being pretty extreme, and some of his replies are just plain petty. Then I talked about a lot of his Marvel 2019 takes, and I even ended the video saying this. Anywho, is this guy really a caught extremist? Does he earn a spot amongst the ranks of blame truth archives and eight thoughts themselves? Nah, <laughs> not quite. It's not like he made petitions to get developers fired or sent death threats because, oh, the video game wasn't made in my entitled perfect image. 
right? Nothing extreme like that. He's just a decent sized influencer with a big ego and community, mainly full of trolls and others that just want to have a good laugh. He's got that fan base that'll spam ratio filling up your notification box. Well, since then, he's gone from 13k followers to 63k. Let's see what those followers are up to now. All right, welcome to Twitter. All right, so here's my original tweet that Ghost Hope retweeted. Let's uh, let's just actually go over this in chronological order. This actually started from not Blame Truth, aka Blame Truth. And if we click that one, we actually uh, start way over here where Blame Truth is retweeting some Steam chart stats. He says that Sledgehammer Games turned the course of the following player base on Steam and that they gained traction with their new season. They have bested Infinity Ward now, this same time last year in player retention. It wasn't skill-based matchmaking, EOMM, or microtransactions that did this. It was listening to us and giving us fresh new content. Uh, specifically, a lot of maps. Get high as a new mode is the cherry on top. I'm the most critical person on here when it comes to Call of Duty, so hopefully this means more coming from me. Great work, guys, at Sledgehammer Games. So, actually, look, wait, wait, look at this, look at this. <laughs> Conveniently, he doesn't show before April last year, and he's only comparing this year's April to last year's April. And if you guys remember last year, which, uh, let's actually find my tweet where I pointed this out. Peak player count during MW3 cycle has been consistently above 100k. Uh, during MW2, it was always during a new season drop, and then uh, fell harshly until the end of October when the beta dropped over MW3. And then here I say, we can see the average. Peak will always be higher around new content drops or new Warzone maps. It doesn't matter if it's MW3 or MW2. It's still gonna peak around the start of a season, guys. I took a screenshot at the start of the month. Rebirth Island is inflating the average player pool, obviously, and sadly, it isn't by much. The truth is, MW3 should be higher. And so as you can see, this user up here, I, I don't know who that is, but they were comparing the peak player count when we really should be comparing the average. So as you can see here on this chart, this is the average players, and this uh, little green line here is where Modern Warfare 2 dropped, and this little red one up here in November is when Modern Warfare 3 dropped. Modern Warfare 2 was at 223,000 players when it launched, and Modern Warfare 3 was at 95,000 when it launched. However, here's the kicker. <laughs> Warzone 2.0 also launched in November, a week after Modern Warfare 2 launched. So obviously, the player count's gonna be higher. And since this is Steam charts, we're actually looking at the Call of Duty hub. We're not looking at Modern Warfare 2 versus MW3. This, everything past November and up here, is including Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Warzone 2, DMZ, Zombies, all of that good jazz up here. Down here, we only have Modern Warfare 2, DMZ, and Warzone 2. We don't have MW3 and Modern Warfare Zombies. So after we see Warzone 2's player base kind of just dive off a cliff in these first like three or four months, we start averaging around 86 to maybe 60,000 players a month. So compare that to Modern Warfare 3's launch, where we started at 95,000 slash maybe 100,000 kind of like stayed relatively the same for those first two months and then we started diving off the cliff again right and if we look at this downward spiral we might have been at 60,000 players a month this April from January onward we were 89,000 83,000 74,000 but it then spikes up to 85,000 mysteriously some people like blame truth were blaming this on sledgehammer games listening to their fan base but I don't think that makes logical sense. How do you go from 74,000 to 85,000 by listening? The people who left are not coming back unless there's a huge update, which there wasn't, unless you're wanting to count the get high mode as a huge update, which is it's not really COD 6v6 multiplayer, so yeah. I think this 85,000 spike here is due to the whole like Rebirth Island coming back to Warzone, which makes sense because Warzone 2, look how much it spiked up down here when my MW2 dropped, so I feel like it would spike up again in. That's a very iconic map. It, it dates all the way back to Blackout, right? Like that was the Alcatraz map back then too. And that was a zombies map beforehand as well. Rebirth Island resonates with a lot of players. So I feel like that's kind of a, a given, right? Like you're going to go up another 10,000 at least. But at the same time, I still think this is a lower player count than last year. Like it's gotta be. If we compare uh, April to last year's April, right? This was at 81,000. This is at 85,000. That's a 4,000 difference. And players are still on Modern Warfare 2. How many players are on MW2? We don't really know, but I I, I don't see less than 10,000 being on there. Like, I'm giving you a low ball. I think at least maybe 10,000 are still on MW2. I don't think it would drop from 68,000 to anything lower than 10,000, right? <laughs> so that being like a, you know, a 4,000 difference between last year and this year, it's, it's really not a lot. 
I don't think it's saying much. And that's just me looking at statistics. I'm not trying to shit on MW3 here, okay? Now, as I said earlier, I did take a screenshot of Steam charts uh, early in the month. I believe it was April 1st when I took it because I included this in my April 1st video. The season three update itself released on April 3rd. So that was like two days after April 1st, which was when the screenshot was taken, right? We went from 74,000 to 75,000. It's the last 30 days. So it's including some of March, not most of April, right? The stats in uh, this image right here were taken on April 20th. So that's almost a full month later of data gained for your average players. Your average, not the peak, the average. And if those players are enjoying Rebirth, well, guess what? They are the new average. This just further goes to show that Season 3 and Rebirth boosted the player count. But anyway, back to uh, Blame Truth's little tweet here. There was a little bit of a, a comment underneath from Mr. Seven here that says, uh, it's literally just the content and weekly grinds. If IW had the time to pump out this much content, they would have. Uh, the reason this person's talking about IW here is just because Mr. Blame Truth here was uh, shooting on them. They have bested Infinity Ward. But anyway, Anyway, he retweeted this and said they had three years and 3,000 devs. So seven says back, one, Infinity Ward has 700-ish employees. Two, they had to offload a lot of MW2 content to Sledgehammer Games to implement into MW3, which is pretty true. Three, Infinity Ward had to help Cherik with significant engine stuff with the new IW engine. I personally do not know. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? I don't think that would take much from the dev time though, because Cherik would have been working on this engine since uh, Vanguard released, which is years ago at this point, right? Four, they have to work on their own next game with uncertain timelines because of Microsoft acquisition. Now, I also don't really know much about this. But anyway, I just said, yeah, to be honest, I think you're just arguing with the wrong people here because these guys think IW has no role in MW3. It's funny because the perk system was literally Infinity Ward's fix for MW2's perk system. If you guys remember, there was a leak a month or two ago saying that Infinity Ward was in charge of the MW3 perk system and Sledgehammer Games actually wanted to do a pick 10 for MW3 to v3 but infinity ward said no and to do it their way in my opinion i think this is just uh, really unfortunate because if this was actually implemented into mw2 i think a lot of fans would have been very happy and i, I just kind of feel like infinity ward was forced to implement it into mw3 so that mw3 could sell well so then i say that it's funny and what i'm calling funny right here is that a lot of people deny infinity ward had a role in mw3 so I, I say that that is funny because all the maps were iw's at one point some are still poorly remastered though. Uh, all the maps being all the launch maps in MW3 because they are from the original Modern Warfare 2 in 2011, I believe. They're still Infinity Ward's maps, even though Infinity Ward is mostly a different studio. It's still their maps though. I say that it's also funny because over half the equipment and field upgrades and streaks are also direct ports over from MW2. And I guess that also includes the guns, right guys? It's a shame we never got MW2 year two and instead got this mess. Now, there is a lot to unpack with this little sentence here that a lot of people, quote, retweeting this, did not want to ask about, okay? A lot of them just wanted to be mad, including Ghost of Hope and Bob Network UK. The reason I say that it's a shame we never got MW2 year two and instead got this mess is because this perk system in MW3 should have been here for Modern Warfare 2. It was something we heavily requested for MW2. Infinity Ward still made it. So that just begs the question, why wasn't it implemented into MW2? Why did they save it for MW3? It just makes no sense unless they're trying to sell MW3. It's business. Business, not um, necessarily making a good game, unfortunately. <laughs> it's It seems more like a business tactic by, I would say, Activision or I guess maybe some Infinity Ward higher-ups, but who really knows at this point, they're, I think they'd be pretty much the same people. The studio Infinity Ward as a whole, I believe, is a really good studio. I just, the higher-ups in general suck the life out of COD. I say that it's also a shame because, you know, Modern Warfare 2 maps were supposed to release in the game titled Modern Warfare 2. Too. They were shown off in the COD Next event the year prior. I always say this, I sound like a broken record, but these maps were literally made to be in MW2 and they just weren't released in MW2. This also kind of ties into the mess of MW3. They have been porting over the MW22 maps into Modern Warfare 3 this year, but it's being drip fed. If we just had MW2 year two, we could have had all these OG MW2 maps all in one big expansion pack for MW2022. We wouldn't be waiting for Modern Warfare 2022's content to come into 
to Modern Warfare 2023. <laughs> so in general, there would have been way more content right off the bat. This also goes for 2v2. We actually would have had enough 2v2 maps to play on. Modern Warfare 3 barely has any, and there's very slowly trickling them down from MW2 into MW3. It also goes for Ground War, and this also kind of goes for all the game modes that are slowly returning as well. I feel like every time I look at a roadmap in MW3, I'm like, why wasn't this just here at launch? We, you, you was in MW2 last year. It's built on the same fucking Call of Duty hub. Why can't it just be there at launch? And the fact that we have some OG MW2 maps that are poorly remastered, Oh, I, I feel like that's just because like, I, I feel like that just goes to show the crunch time these devs were working on. All of those Modern Warfare 2 maps releasing at launch just was not the best idea. I, I do think they should have just been slowly released throughout MW2 year 2. That way Derailed could have been finished, it could have got the foliage that's missing. That way Rundown, that way it could have been finished, like the, the, the outskirts of the map, right? You guys remember this at launch? We were, we were posting this all over Twitter at launch in MW3, <laughs> and it's still not fixed because I'm showing you the footage right now. <laughs> but anyways, this whole tweet right here, it got quotes retweeted by the man himself. Oh my god, this glorious soul. Mr. Ghost of Hope in the flesh says, maybe you morons should have played MW2 more in its life cycle if you wanted MW2 year 2 so bad. Clearly, we have statistics that show nobody wanted to play that dog shit game, let alone a second year of it. Go play it and jerk yourself off in a corner waiting for your perks to charge. Alright, so now that I've read this, let's get into his little hive-minded community that I can't really see on my own account because I'm blocked. Uh, he's got HOLY COOK, which Hope just replies with, IW fanboys are the literal worst. These MFers can't even get the people who enjoyed MW19 to be on their side, lol. It's funny that I constantly see low level accounts on MW3, which I rarely if ever see on previous CODs because it's almost like MW3 is good and the hate was manufactured. That's a really interesting anecdote to point out. Me personally, Personally, I'm not really the highest level account in MW3, but that's more so because I'm not playing the game as much. I'm not enjoying it as much, but uh, if you want to see constantly low level player counts in MW3 as a good thing, by all means. I guess you can just pretend that they're enjoying the game as much uh, to the point that they're actually spending the 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 time Modern Warfare 2 players didn't spend on their game. Ha 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 ha. Like, I don't know. I think that's just a little bit ironic that you think that seeing high level accounts in MW2 means that uh, there's not as much of a player base enjoying the game in MW2 compared to MW3, whereas in MW3 seeing more low accounts of players spending less playtime means that the game's in a better state. Like, interesting take there. You know, after MW2's main life cycle, I also started seeing lower skill accounts, or sorry, lower level accounts. <laughs> as if like maybe skill-based matchmaking started easing up a little bit, because there's not as much of a player base there. After the life cycle. But uh, MW3's during. Mm, yes. And then further reading into the comments on here, we got Mr. L saying that uh, MW2 is a game that won't be affected by the COD cycle. That's how bad it is. People that unironically defend MW2 multiplayer deserve to eat expired bread. Here we have Harvey Jet again saying that I too get pissed at seeing IW stands glaze MW2 even though the devs spat in their faces too. And then Ghost of Hopes here says, uh, this guy made a YouTube video calling me toxic because I kept laughing at his takes during Vanguard. And then Harvey Jet says, uh, uh, right after that, that yeah, this same guy was like two seconds away from putting you in one of his scum videos with that poorly photoshopped tweet. Sure, he rounded it back, but if it wasn't called out heavily, no doubt he would have put it in as a gotcha goes to hope. So just to like fill you guys in on what this guy's talking about, there was a guy called Mario and Kart, and I did put him in that video uh, at the very, very end because that whole video was titled Call Diddy Extremist right? And I ended up saying, Ghost of Hope, no, you're, you're not an extremist. But you know who is an extremist? Mario and Kart. Because Mario and Kart had faked a, a whole tweet around Ghost of Hope, and these guys, I guess, want to play uh, a little game of, oh, I uh, actually, uh, I saved you, Ghost of Hope. I saved you from this guy, uh, in, uh, from putting you in a gotcha moment, Ghost of Hope. As if my whole video was going to be built around him, like, saying, like, all devs at IW need to, uh, you know, perish in Minecraft, ha ha ha. But that's not really how I roll. I don't get into 
sort of drama like that. I like to talk about Call of Duty analytically. I like to express my opinions on Call of Duty itself. That's what I kind of did in this video for how long was it? 10 minutes and 42 seconds breaking down all of his points made on Twitter? Like, let's just look at one of them here. Reading a minimap equals low skill. He quote retweeted me here saying reading a minimap equals low skill when that wasn't even what I said in the first place. I said that I was glad Vanguard had a radar perk though for those unable or unwilling to adapt. I consider those players lower skilled though because a counter UAV must have ruined their entire day since MW2, the O. Oh, gee, lol. <laughs> is that not true though? Like, if there is a counter UEV in the air and you can't read your minimap, does that just ruin your entire day on the other Call of Duty games? Hopefully not. Otherwise, you probably had a really bad time. And about Vanguard having a radar perk for those unwilling or unable to adapt, like, I know people, I have friends who didn't want to adapt. This is exactly what it was for them. Like, I know one of my friends, his, his name is Lad. He uh, always used this radar perk in Vanguard. He didn't really use the compass, but I feel like if you did learn the compass in Modern Warfare 2019, you could bring that skill over to Vanguard, and then guess what? Now that you have that skill, you can run a different perk in that perk category. You didn't have to run radar. You could get an extra awareness perk, because I, if I remember correctly, Vanguard's perk system, like with the radar perk, it was like divided into three different categories, and one of them was extra awareness. So I could run tracker or radar or high alert, something else that helps me be more aware of my surroundings. The radar perk was still a effective in Vanguard, but I'm just saying, if you learn the compass, you don't really need the radar perk. It's not ah, that beneficial. But anyway, he just like retweeted this or quote retweeted this saying reading a minimap equals low skill when it's <laughs> not what I said at all all. I said that being able to read the game without a minimap is higher skill. You're not a low skill player for reading the minimap. Like, dude, high skill players are going to read the minimap and they're going to take full advantage of it. When you have a UAV, it doesn't matter if the game has red dots by default or not. When a UAV is up, it's the exact same thing in every COD, even Modern Warfare 2019. So I'm still reading the minimap, guys. Well, let's find another here. Did you ever use the compass in Modern Warfare? Yes. 28%. What is that? 72%. This R word did, Lamau, aka me. <laughs> this was where I talked about uh, how his player base could not rush in Modern Warfare 2019 and they didn't even know how to use the compass. So it's like, wow, you're just gonna ignore a core feature and act like you're supposed to be the god at the game, right? Like, oh, okay, okay, sure. But that's the sort of stuff I talked about in my video. My, my video was never gonna be about what Mario and Kart said, man. Like, one, it's not verifiable. Two, the the guy didn't take a screenshot, he took a picture of his screen. And three, if you guys hadn't pointed it out, I wouldn't have said it as one of my main points. I would have just said something like, apparently he's also done this in the past, but I can't confirm or deny it. I've just had someone come forth and say this. Just as I've actually had other people come forth to say other stuff about Ghost of Hope while this whole drama was going down, they DM'd me about it, but you know what? I'm not even gonna include it in the video because there is no way to verify it. They just said they had some sort of sort of shiz on Mr. Hope here, but if they can't provide any proof, well, guess what? It's not making it into the video at all. How do you like that? Hope you're happy. I don't know, but uh, that uh, yourself off in a corner made me cry, lol. I just thought it up because all MFers would do is camp on those games, so I assumed they'd jerk themselves off to pass the time. Very clever, very clever. Go play it and zero yourself off in a corner waiting for bricks to charge. Lol 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 lol. Sean says, I like how the streamers think they are the majority. MW2 has its faults, but the gameplay was better. The speed of MW3 is too much for long-term enjoyment. Yeah, you mentioned statistics, but the only reasons why MW3 is outperforming MW2 is because of gimmicks, aka nostalgia maps, etc. Wow, we actually had someone that went against the green here. Um, he didn't reply to him though, interesting. Yeah, damn. Uh, for real, so many uh, complained about not having an MW2 year 2. Did you really want that terrible game for another year? General says MW2 was the first COD I had no desire to play after getting camos. I'm also forever mad about the fact that the coolest looking 10 nukes calling card is stuck in that game. Would have grinded it so much if it was an MW3. Own that fraud! This is MW2 year 2. It was always meant to be a messy premium expansion to begin with. Hey, finally we got some people with logic in here. Cool. We're lucky Sledgehammer was responsible for it 
because the Lord knows that IW would have done with the MW3 year two if they could have made it. Okay, come on, that's not entirely fair. MW2 fans can continue sucking shit out of a straw for all I care. Okay, okay, never mind. <laughs> two years of MW2, puke, puke, puke. So you mean to tell me that people didn't like waiting for two minutes before they could uh, reload quicker? <laughs> to be honest, I kind of liked that in MW2. I feel like it matched the pace of the game. Like if that sort of system where you can't uh, cancel a reload was in MW3, like I don't think that would have matched the pace of MW3 because MW3 is just way, way faster paced. Like the movement speed is a lot faster. The time to kill is a lot faster, which just means you can get two different flank routes a lot easier as well. So again, I feel like it works in MW2. You gotta be more strategic about your playstyle. Whereas in MW3, it's more of a movement shooter. MW2 was by far the worst COD experience I've ever had. Baffling decisions by Infinity Ward. Never paying another game made by that clown show. You killed him faster than MW2 killed people's faith in IW. Goddamn. It basically is MW2. Let's be real. It just had the movement and gun update. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. <laughs> perk update, you had the a gun expansion, you had a slight streak expansion, a, a slight equipment expansion, which literally goes back to what I was saying here. It's funny because over half the equipment and field upgrades are and streaks are direct ports over from MW2. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Joe says, besides the campaign, MW3 didn't deserve the hate it got, in my opinion, from the media for what Sledgehammer Games was uh, able to pull off coming from the dangerous damage MW2 did to the series. <laughs> Sorry, he, he Joe said disastrous damage, but uh, Cam Bam the man here just posted something in my Discord that I thought I'd include here just because it's from the Act Man, and I think it just best encapsulates what's going on here. <laughs> the reason COD sucks so much dick nowadays is because the community is pulling them in so many different directions. Every time they say they're tired of three-lane maps, they complain that the non-three-lane maps are like a maze. Call of Duty fans ask for innovation, but every time they get it, they hate it. It's really not that simple to just find what people want, because Call of Duty <laughs> has such a cancerous community that all seem to want different things. Yeah, pretty much. We all do want different things. But instead of people being okay with that, they just go out and attack them. They'll make up lies about your playstyle to push you down in the dirt. Some even go as far as saying that Modern Warfare 2019's map design is not like OG COD at all, when if you compare it just to Modern Warfare Remastered back in 2016, the, the map design is very, very similar. Safe spaces have always existed in Call of Duty. We have had CODs with porous map design before, and we've also had CODs with three-lane basic bitch map design. <laughs> now, the problem is Call of Duty is a yearly release sort of game, which means that the previous COD, if you enjoyed it, let's say, it won't get support the next year. So what you're going to be doing as a community member is trying to prove how that COD that you enjoyed was amazing and why it needs to be replicated again. Again, the problem is that Call of Duty is a yearly release, so when you don't enjoy the next COD, you feel like you're being excluded. That is sort of what leads us into this toxic behavior that we see between fans arguing about what Call of Duty needs to be. Players feel pressured, and if they don't talk, they're going to waste an entire year on a COD that they don't enjoy. So they feel this obligation to get their opinions out and above others, even if that means they have to lie and exaggerate about design decisions so that their preferred game gets pushed above yours. I, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious about what the community thinks about MW2 and even MW3 according to reviews on Steam. Only people who hate MW3 are IW fanboys and the people not in the COD fanbase to know a difference. Because IW had no hands on MW3, we all totally know that, right guys? Infinity Ward, nah, they didn't touch MW3 at all. It's, it's Sledgehammer Games was able to make a full COD in 16 months by themselves, 100%. Sledgehammer Games, uh-uh, they made the zombies, they made the multiplayer, they made the campaign. All of them. Let's not kid ourselves. MW2 genuinely might be my least favorite COD game I have ever played. It genuinely made me feel nothing but anger and apathy. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry for you, man. The worst part is that they are defending IW while they are actively trying to screw over Sledgehammer games and are why we got a half-assed pick 10 system and no old prestige system, which everyone has been asking for. But ah, uh, yes, let's go Infinity Ward and no map voting advocators. Haha. <laughs> be honest, I am a no map voting advocator. I actually like 
like playing all the maps in the game. I'd rather not spend my time twiddling my thumbs on shipment 24-7, especially when it appears in the playlists outside of shipment 24-7. I hate when people vote for one map all the time. So yes, I do like it when there's no map voting. One of my like vivid memories was just way back on Black Ops 3, whenever Nuketown appears, everyone would play it over the other 15 or other really good maps in the game. It sucks. It very much sucks the life out of the game, but that's just my opinion. I hated MW2 too, but I found the perk system cool. I guess I'm the only one. <gasps> Guys, we finally found one. We finally found one. Uh, don't know how to pronounce your name, but oh my god. Uh, uh, I need to reply to this guy. <laughs> what did you like about it? I mean, look, look, look. I found something I liked about the perk system, but I don't like the perk system. I don't think it should return. I, I think you can balance perks way better than they had in MDV2, but at least the tier 3 perks were pretty balanced. I really did enjoy how Ghost was unlocked later because it just kind of sped up the pace of the game. I, I like that the UEVs felt a lot more powerful, you know what I mean? Lamau. Lol. Modern for 2 was great from season 2 onward and nobody is ever going to change my mind. The game was easily better than Modern for 2019 and MW3. Ooh, interesting. I also agree that like season 2 reloaded and onward made MW2 a really good game. Like it's in my probably top 4, 3 Call of Duties of all time around there. But better than Modern for 2019? Mm -hmm. I don't know. See, I, I personally have a hard time debating if MW 2019 and MW 2 are uh, like which one is the better game. I do come out with MW 2019 on top just because I remember its post-launch support being a lot better. But I do really like how uh, all the Modern Warfare 2 game mechanics like sort of flow together as well. Like even having swimming on the new maps is great and dolphin diving alongside sliding was a really cool addition. I like the pacing of MW 2. I like, I think the map design is a lot more refined in MW 2 compared to Modern Warfare 2019 where as Modern Warfare 2019 just has a little bit more fat that could be trimmed off the edges of the maps. And also the visuals of Modern Warfare 2, I like them a lot more. I think the color schemes are better. But yeah, interesting take. Want year two of MW2? Just play the game for another year, lol. I mean, I, I could. It's just that they made it incredibly annoying to actually launch Modern Warfare 2. You have to load up M MW3 first and then load up MW2 after that, which takes like almost a whole minute. It's pretty annoying. Thank you. Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer is literally better than MW2 in every single way. No exceptions. I am genuinely baffled that some people prefer MDV2 over it. Well, yeah, some people like the movement that's closer to the original MW2. Get this, MW3 is not like OG COD. Modern Warfare 3 is way more of a movement shooter. It is way more in line with the jetpack era of COD, which also like would extend to, I guess, like Black Ops 4, let's just say. Like if I played the Infinite Warfare Boots on the Ground mosh pit and uh, compared that to this new MW3, like that would be a lot more uh, similar than comparing MW3 to the OG MW3. Oh, finally, Mark says here, the player numbers are only up because of Rebirth. MW2 was such a better game than MW3. I agree with them. Almazra is the best BR map we've had. Oh my god, I, I really agree with this guy. Fuck, dude, I loved Almazra. Easily the best battle royale map for, for me, in my opinion. Here's this guy's thoughts on MW3. Shit Warzone ranked. Shit multiplayer ranked. An abandoned zombies mode. Recycled old maps. Bang for bang, bang for bock, however the saying goes. Mark, I agree with you. Thank you. Based as fuck. Uh, DMZ is still better than Warzone, buddy. See if. <laughs> uh, cooked his ass. Let me have here. Let's just do this. is the last one. Yes, Sledgehammer Games did some key changes that turn MW2 into MW3 we love now. But seriously, 90% of the game was made by Infinity Ward. All it took you guys was some slight inconveniencing movement. Standard COD TTK. Not high. It's standard and dead silence not as a perk. And you guys. Dip. Exactly. See, I feel like this is the very thing people like MW3 for, and they kind of just turn a blind eye to the rest of the entire game. And sure, like, MW3 is getting a lot of maps, but if we look at what those maps are and the quality of those maps, like, all the launch maps are made by Infinity Ward, they're whatever, they're old as well. And then for DLC maps, even though we're getting, like, what was it, was it six maps in Season 3 or something like that? A good portion of those maps are actually tiny maps, and do you even have a remake of a vanguard fucking map dude like come on one of them called tanked isn't even a great map like it is just a port over from the warzone map last year i believe and it doesn't really feel like it was made to be a cod map that's not to say every map from warzone ported over to multiplayer is a bad map i just don't think it was built for multiplayer i think vondel waterfront last year was definitely built for multiplayer but tanked hell no this thing is flat 
uninspiring. Heck, it's even more forgettable than Border Crossing. So yeah, Flo, Flo, good comment. I like that one. And before we get into the comments on my actual tweet right here, let's look at the quote retweet Bob Network gave here. <laughs> He's also a really big influencer. He's got 14.5k followers. He's also a leaker, data miner, and player. I'm pretty sure he's actually a, a more of a recent leaker, so his account isn't as big as Ghost of Hopes over the past couple years, right? But anyway, he says that I think I would have uh, fallen from a high height in Minecraft without the totem of undying um, myself if we got MDV2 year two. Ha 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 ha. Funny. Funny. On his replies, you got people saying, well, we did though, that's basically what we got in MW3. Literally same guns, there were not enough new ones at launch to be honest. Same mechanics, same old shit. MW2 year 2 probably wouldn't have had slide cancelling, new perk system, etc. Well, Bob, right there, I, I disagree because Infinity Ward designed the new perk system. I don't think you have any points to back that up. I think a lot of people have just uh, built this uh, negative connotation around Infinity Ward and are treating this kind of like a my team versus you your team mentality. They don't think Infinity Ward have the player's best interests in mind. It's a stigma they've built up, and frankly, I think it is blinding them. Anyway, uh, to that comment we have, I don't think slide counseling is enough of a feature to be a whole new game. Oh, that's true. Uh, considering I'm way too slow nowadays to keep up with that super fast movement, so I just don't use it. And the perk systems are neat, I guess. I'm a bit uninformed nowadays due to dropping MW3 in Season 2, so this person is no longer playing. It sounds like they're more more of an old school sort of Call of Duty player. God, am I an old school Call of Duty player too? Cause I mean, I started on the OG MDV3, right? But I, I kind of played it offline. And then I really got into Call of Duty during the jetpack era and I love the jetpack era to death. That is just my favorite type of COD gameplay. And again, while I do really like MW3's time to kill and movement, I just got the, the negatives around the game just do not bring it up above MW2 even close. Bob quotes that I don't think this advertised feature of the game is enough because I can't use it. And Zesty says, yeah, for me. For other players who are actually good at the game, I heard it was a game changer. No need for hostility, friend. That's just unnecessary. Now, this is kind of what I was uh, referring to right here. Why I bring uh, Mr. Bob Network into this sort of uh, line of fire with Ghost of Hope. He's not on the level of insanity of Ghost of Hope, let's just say. He's not He's not as much of an extremist. He's just uh, an exaggerationist, a, a drama queen. Like, really, over a video game, you're gonna make that joke that you're just gonna drown to death in Minecraft, huh? Hmm. Yeah, if we got MDV2 year 2, that's what you would have done. Yeah, yeah, sure. Anyway, I'm not invalidating your points. I just don't really remember it being in ads, but my memory is spotty, so that's probably just me. Bob Network says official image, new slide, cancel. Same cancel slide animation, no text print reset. Neat, I didn't know that. Uh, must have missed it. Maybe I could have learned how to slide cancel if I just tried. But sadly nowadays, I feel like I'm just a slow old man compared to the people who can move at the speed of sound. I don't hate the game, by the way. I wasn't trying to come off as that. My bad. Same here, dude. I, I don't really hate MW3. I just don't think it's that great of a COD game, especially a, a standalone COD game. Plasmasklore says, uh, what's it say? I have whoever this tweet quoted uh, blocked LMFAO. There's the tweet. It all makes sense now. This the MF who thinks COD was always realistic military sim and thinks no one actually likes this shit COD does now. Uh, they also completely simp for IW. Very good block. High IQ comment here, uh, yep, because I've I've definitely been asking for realistic military sim Call of Duty, yes, yes, um, not, not, not just the art style, no, I've been asking for the gameplay as well to be a mil sim, I want COD to be a mil sim, blah, 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 yeah, sure, dude. Sure. It's not like Kata ever had a military theme at once upon a time. No, definitely not the OG MW3 that introduced me into COD. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> definitely not BO2, which was a futuristic take on Call of Duty with a military theme. Nah, nah, nah. Upgrade and streaks are direct ports over MW2. Wow, is like the game is called Modern Warfare Vulcan 3, released a year later with a carry forward system. Fucking genius. It, uh, I think, uh, I think you missed the point. I think you're using the, the carry forward system to justify MW3 being DLC. Like, don't get me wrong, I think camos carrying forward it was a really good idea, but, uh, guns carrying forward? 
Not really, I think that really threw off the balance. Equipment carrying forward, well, a lot of it is not utilized. Streaks carrying forward, well, that's just copy and paste, it's recycled content. That wasn't really part of the carry forward system, I would say. It's not like we could buy streak variants back in MW2. Carry forward was more so supposed to be for the cosmetics, but unfortunately, the cosmetics kind of affect the gameplay when it comes to guns, so I think that was kind of a negative. I was about to jump off a bridge here next day MW3 was announced. I need someone to explain to me why people are calling MW3 a mess. This is by far 10 times more of a complete product than MW2 was and is? Whoa. And is? That's a big claim. A year two of MW2 would have produced the lowest player counts ever and would have been a miserable mess of a second year, so I don't get that take, lol. Well man, I think you just didn't really enjoy the gameplay, whereas a lot of other people did enjoy the gameplay and they just were kind of sick of the lack of content. Just kind of depends what circle you're in, I guess, for Call of Duty. If you guys like the old movement or the new movement, uh, I'm kind of a fan of both, but dude, <laughs> 10 times more of a complete product? Hell no. Have you have you even played that campaign? Maybe you should. So that's what's under Bob Network's quote retweet here. Those are the types of comments he gets, and compared to Ghost of Hope, like, I think it's a uh, not night and day difference, but Ghost of Hope's mm, a little more, little more toxic. So uh, let's see what comments I actually got. All right, so Modern Warfare 3 is literally just what if MTV2 was good? How could you like MTV2 and not this? I do like the movement in TTK of MTV3 who said I didn't. Oh, I know, I know who. The the guys who retweeted my stuff. Yeah, them. I'll take this mess over another year of MTV2 any day. Then I said I'd rather support getting a studios a full three years of dev time. Uh, excuse the the ads I'm getting. Um, well, let's just skim right by that. <laughs> Blame Truth says, and who do you think is to blame for that? Activision. And if you guys don't remember what he's saying, who's to blame for whatever the fuck I was talking about, this is what I was talking about. I was talking about all the stuff that's recycled from MW2 and MW3. And he's saying, who's to blame for that? And he says, Activision. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So so you're agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're the one who's saying here that Sledgehammer Games bested Infinity War this year based on the Steam shots. Uh, why say that in the first place then? Uh, I don't think he gave me a reply to that actually. Um, Unfortunately, <laughs> we had uh, this hidden comment here, which I'll, I might have to censor this one, but they said, uh, yes, cause Infinity Ward is just a bunch of R words that have a fucking thumb up their asses and don't listen to player feedback and instead are lined up to suck Joe Seacott's, uh, Joe Seacock like it's a kissing booth. Mwah. That's, that's what you sound like, buddy. Seems like the Joe Seacott hate is going hard a year. How many years has it been since Smart for 2019? Five years? And we're, we're still making fun of developers? Really, guys? Really? Just because they didn't make a game you liked? Like, come on, we're not two years old. On the other hand, I personally wouldn't have been able to handle a second year of MW2. If MW2 year 2 radically changed to play like MW3 then, but uh, if it was just more MW2 then no. Anthony or Blame Truths here says uh, this right here, having faith in that debut to deliver anything but crap, even though after the fact is insane. I fully disagree. I really do think they would have changed the perk system. And here I say I IW or Activision because Blame Truth earlier, as I just went over, said it was Activision's fault and now he's switching it up again. Uh, but to continue on, I would rather paint my ceiling red than spend an extra minute on MW2. <laughs> I said, then do it. Then do it. Just do it. Make your dreams come true. Elite BTW says, if you enjoyed MW2 so much, then have fun sitting in the corners waiting for perks to charge up. A default MW3 will forever be better than having a year two on MW2. This seems oddly close to Ghost of Hope's tweet, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but <laughs> I said, yeah, you're a moron. Reason being, I, I think it's quite fair. If you're, if you're going to be here telling me, have fun sitting in corners. If you're just going to make up a gameplay uh, style for me, well, fuck you, you're a moron. Anyway, he says you were called out for the same reason by Bob Network UK and the Ghost of Hope. Which goes to show you who this guy follows, am I right? Uh, this person says, you're the moron. Nobody is agreeing with your shit takes. And Joel here says MW3 is pretty much MW2's year two, but way better, way better. Don't even try to <laughs> deny it. Uh, I said, why? Because of movement and time to kill. I like it too, but that just isn't the majority of the game. So they say that it's a good start to enjoy. And I said, well, yeah. It is, but it's still not the majority of the game. Stuart Little says, uh, it's a good thing that we never got MW2 year two. That shit was awful. I had to literally roll myself off the nearest bridge if we had to play that game for another year. Honestly, fucking abysmal game. Wow, lots of people just want to roll off bridges today. MW2 was and is dog shit, lamau. It's the shame that we got MW2 year two instead of this mess in quotes. You're saying that as if you aren't in the vocal minority. This person says they aren't even vocal. There's like three 
three people that wanted MW2 here too. Biggest L take, MW3 is way better than MW2. Better movement, better maps, more funkier stuff. I'd rather that to be honest. Call of Duty needs some new blood. I believe you should be banned from the entire internet, says Pork. So it's apparently automated. I don't even know what that means on Twitter. What? It's a shame we never got your two from IW. That's a deaf take. I mean, I didn't say from IW, did I? But okay. I would literally uh, roll off a bridge in Minecraft myself if MTV2 year two was a thing. Haha. Uh -huh. Mess, uh, literally the best COD we've gotten in a year. And yeah, <laughs> just in a year? Okay. But yeah, it, ha it had some problems. What game doesn't? A night and day from last year. 100% improvement. Uh, again, I think people are being blinded by just good movement and time to kill. I really just don't think it's a easy 100% nope oh yeah this person posted whatever this was uh basically says get a job n-word and yeah it's wow just wow definitely need people like this in the cod community right guys smoke and willie t says mw2 from 2022 was trash dude if like like that game you like eating your own poop Hmm. And if we look at the quotes retweets, we also had some more. We got one here from Exovandi saying forever grateful. We got Modern Warfare 3 instead of Modern Warfare 2, year 2. Hope says maybe you're more on should have played MW2 more during its life cycle. We already read that. Obviously, it's such a tone deaf take. This guy says MW2 did some irreparable damage to this community. Aw, irreparable damage. Guys, aw, fuck, I guess I ruined the fucking COD community because I dare prefer playing another game. The COD cycle never ends, does it? I love seeing you guys whine and whine about the current slash any titles because all you immediately go swinging songs of praise about them in a few years. Uh, meanwhile, folks like me who liked them from day one are looked at unfavorably. All right, I think the game had a lot of problems from day one up to season two reloaded, but uh, you do you, I guess. Blame the, the phantom COD cycle on, on your issues. Mm, yes. Everyone should think the same as you. We, we should all be robots. Of course, of course. Uh, holy brain rot. Blood said it's funny cause three looking times. <laughs> I did, I did. And I did that intentionally. Mar for two is a crock of shit and still amazed you uh, MFers have a uh, Stockholm syndrome this bad. Look man, <laughs> every COD has its negatives. I've gone over the majority of Modern Warfare 2's negatives in my first eight essay style videos right after MW2 launched. I even went over more negatives in my Modern Warfare 2 is severely underrated video. At no point have I developed a psychological bond with a game treating me like shit. I think if anything, look back at the current COD store in MW3. Are you guys seriously okay with this? We had a $100 camo in the other IRL COD shop, but then also in MW3's shop, we now have an $80 melee weapon and this battle pass style unlock tree to get even more cosmetics. The level of manipulation this new monetization strategy has put on Call of Duty Wills is insane. I still call out what I dislike about MW2, DMZ, Warzone 2, and especially Modern Warfare 3 since it's the current Call of Duty. But true conditioning is people justifying the current COD shop as a, oh, it's just the bonus rewards for spending so much money. <laughs> Dude, the $100 camo in the IRL COD merch shop was on a FOMO time limit. Dude, a whole ass melee weapon and the skin are not tiny little bonus rewards. Those are the main appeal to every single overpriced bundle in the store. And on top of that, these bundles are already overpriced. And it gets drastically worse every single year now. But no, shut up. Buy Black Cell every season and don't complain. Huh? Helldivers got its game turned around when people complained? <laughs> nah, more like Smell Divers were little whiny runts that never leave their basement. Their, 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 their shop cosmetics are so low in price because they can't sell shit like Call of Duty can. They're earnable because, uh, be, because, well, not because it's a video video game, they're earnable because Smell Divers fans hate Sony. Activision, Sony, Microsoft, they need to make money. And these people that hate our 2,400 COD points bundles on average are a problem to our glorious business overlords. Oh, and how did I forget? Just like I said last year for DMZ, if we don't condemn the DMZ bonus effects, we'll see them in multiplayer. And behold, now we have them in multiplayer. Wow, who would have thought? Also, I now play Helldivers and Rainbow Six Siege. Stockholm Syndrome, my ass. 
<laughs> wow, incredible. It only took us a shy of an hour to get through all of this slop. I will say I was a bit surprised at how many people did agree with my take. That's awesome. That's really cool. But unfortunately for me, uh, fortunately for you guys, you get even more content because we're not done yet. We might even get this video over an hour long. <laughs> what a treat. Anyways, the following five days after this little spat, apparently we needed yet another. Both Bobby and Kopi quote tweeted yet another take of mine. This one also wasn't related to them at all, nor any other big influencers like Blame Truth last time. Uh, Bob Network UK found my take on a random user's replies and just had to get another quote tweet in there. Oh, let's have a look. All right, so five days later, there was this post uh, here asking for some criticism, but actually before that, they retweeted this tweet over here by Mr. Peaks. They said that it's insane how hated this game is when it's one of the best COD games we had in years. And they did a little follow-up tweet right here, uh, copycatting someone saying this game sucks, and then they said that, well, you didn't even buy the game, haha. <laughs> so Zach quote tweeted Mr. Peaks here saying that notice how the only vocal criticism surrounding it is that it's a $70 DLC and nothing about how the game actually plays is what's talked about? Speaks volumes about the people who hated it, lol. Alright, so Zach, Zach, Zach. Ah, oh, it seems we have a reoccurring problem here. So let me uh, head over to my account real quick. Alright, here we are and uh... Oh, so we're blocked. <laughs> Zach here asked for criticism and well, when he got it... Huh, interesting. Really, really interesting. It's crazy to me that you have people that are like, speaks volumes about the people who hated it, lol. The only actual criticism is just hate. No one actually talks about the gameplay, bro. Also, anyone who disagrees can go bugger right off. Yeah, you're right. That does speak volumes. Now, because I thought you were genuinely asking for criticism, I decided to give you genuine criticism for the campaign. I said that it probably destroyed getting an MW4 because of how bad it was. The reception for MW3's campaign is probably the worst in the franchise. Do I think it's the worst campaign ever? No, I'd probably say it's the third worst campaign ever, but for a lot of other people, it is the number one worst. Zombies, it's abandoned. We apparently already know this because Treyarch already left and are working on their next game. And then we have multiplayer. Should have been a DLC for MW2 instead of pretending to be a new game. People give it praise for the new content, but in reality, it has been playing catch up. Since at launch, we had zero new content map-wise. The launch maps were all old MW2 maps. The movement and time to kill may have been good, but here's some actual criticism we talked about at launch. Since time has passed, we've moved on and don't talk about the game as much. This is true for my entire friend group. So after my little two tweet intro here, I made 22 bullet points going all the way down here, and then I add a little retweet at the very end. So again, I put everything in bullet point form so that it's pretty easy to read. I start off with something like the game borrows too much assets from the previous game that weapon balancing was a joke. Another one is most of the old field upgrades do not fit the new style of gameplay MTV3 offers. That's why some things like the loadout drop have been removed mid life cycle. It wasn't rebalanced, it was fully removed. Now I'm not going to get into every single one of these because it is a long list, but the reason for that is also because these are going to be my points in my actual multiplayer review for MW3. I thought I'd write them all out now because it would save me time in the future. We had someone actually reply to this by saying, kill the time of the mechanics by actually reading all of this. How long did it take to type all this? I said judging by the timestamps on each post, about 2-3 to three minutes per tweet, so 45 minutes total. I'll probably use this thread later when I review the game. We have other snarky comments like, do you get scared when someone tells you to go to the shower? So I say, why? Am I supposed to have less than three days of playtime in multiplayer after six months? MW3 came out six months ago. I've checked my playtime. I only have like three days, which equates to around 75 hours. It's not a little amount, but it is less in the general sense because I usually get about six to 20 days by the end of the life cycle, depending on if I liked the game or not. And more often than not, I'm spending less playtime in the final half of the life cycle of the game. So seeing that I have three days right now, I might only get like five days by the end of MW3. Bro says dodging the question with a question that had nothing to do with this is quite concerning. I think, uh, I think everything I just said here went right over his head. This person comes in here with a, God, are you still yapping?
moving on about this? Holy shit. Then they respond back with, Lord Yapper is enjoying its three days of glory. Let him enjoy them. You heard it, guys. New name, Lord Yapper. <laughs> you know, I've actually been thinking about starting a second channel soon, and I was just joking about with my friends the other day that uh, I'd be like Yapsuki or something. We might actually go with a uh, Lord Yapsuki. I think that suits me better. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Rose like, touch grass, me at work. Let me touch some dirt. Dude, I had so many comments on here just calling me a yapper. <laughs> I think we had Pork uh, in another comment earlier on, right? Uh, anyway, Pork is back here saying, shh, this is why people don't like you. We got a yapaholic on our hands. The only good thing about MW2 was the camo progression and TMZ. The rest, like Warzone, MP, and Spec Ops were dog shit. Your talk more than playing MW2 because get this, the game was dog shit. Your talk. Well, I think someone needs to go back to school and learn grammar. Maybe a little bit of spelling, throw in some English, and you'll be a pro. Obviously, we already know where this guy came from. He's one of those Ghost of Hope fanboys. This Nova, not my Nova. Uh-uh. He says, I don't remember ordering a Yappuccino. <laughs> Steve says, you know you've won when literally everyone is just attacking you instead of giving you any counterpoints. For real, right? Dude, I already knew I won when the guy who was asking us the question blocked me for giving him the direct answer he wanted. Sorry, maybe that's a little untrue. I'm pretty sure Zack was wanting to live in the reality that the only criticism around the game is that it's a $70 DLC, like nothing else actually exists in his mind. Oh, and then also here, like, uh, Zach says, I could name a million things this game does better than MW2. So he's an MW2 hater and he's just gotta throw MW2 under the bus because what else can he do? He certainly can't argue back with people he's blocked, right? Unless he's Ghost of Hope who's mastered the arts of blocking people. <laughs> now, the rest of these comments are replying to like my first tweet up here. They didn't actually scroll down to the bottom where I ended off my little uh, chain of criticism. So I can tell that most of these guys are actually from Bob Network's quote tweets. As you can see here, this person is saying not reading that dictionary. We got someone saying not reading this thesis. Holy yap. Ain't reading all that. I ain't reading all that. I'm happy for you though. Or sorry that happened. Not reading all that. Falls asleep while reading. Cry baby bitch. <laughs> oh, I thought I was giving criticism. I guess uh, when people give you genuine criticism, it's just crying. Okay. All right. So at this point, you may be wondering, why do I know that all these sort of tweets are from Bob Network UK? Well, let me show you. Here we have Bob Network UK also doing a little stealth quote retweeting here. He didn't retweet my actual tweet. He actually retweeted Zach's tweet, the guy who blocked me. So of course, I'm not going to be able to see this in my notifications. But anyways, he retweeted his tweet and put my comment underneath it. Like... <laughs> I guess this dude's borrowing some tactics from Ghost of Hope now, huh? He says, bro, I'm not reading this fucking essay. Again, this dude wasn't even mentioned in this thing. He just found my reply and quote tweeted under Zach, my reply. Crazy, man. And here's just more further proof here. It may or may not be my fault since I added you in his tweet, lol. I'm more surprised he's going after you more than Ghost of Hope. That's untrue. Anyway, Bob says, I'm not even tagged in that lol. So there you have it. He just found it. That's so much. Much. I'm, I, I, I can only say that I, I'm sorry. Bro needs to actually get a life. I mean, I know saying that type of shit is overused and stuff, but this man actually just pulled out a 20 plus tweets on how he doesn't like MW3. Imagine the time it must have taken this man to section them out like that. Actually, wild lol. No, I actually just thought of them out of the top of my head and listed them. Rapid fire style. Lord Yappers of the Yappington. Already know it's Yap from the bio, MW2 fan. <laughs> I knew including that in my bio would piss some people off, man. Unironic Yap Fest. LMFAO, damn. Unironically MW2's number one fucking fan, LMFAO. Whoa, 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 whoa. The only bit I could catch was the UI thing. Then it was the exact same as MW 2022. All right, let's go off the top of my head right now. Were the field upgrades utilized in MW2 more than MW3? Yes. Did MW2 have an over reliance on tiny grind maps? No. Did MW3? Yeah. Did MW2 launch with 16 remastered recycled maps? No. Did MW3? Yeah. What about weapon balancing? Oh, all of MW2's weapons went into MW3? A game with a longer time to kill, which means it's harder to balance weapons out properly? Hmm. Only one of those games had problems with weapon balancing. But anyways, continuing on because I don't want this video to be too long. Holy yap. Oh, here's a classic 
Classic from Envy. All that account does is yap. Broken heart, broken heart. <laughs> nah, I think it's a valid review, honestly. Oh, thanks, Zesk. I think it's pretty cool that you actually took the time out of your day to read it. It's not something everyone does, which we'll find out very soon with Ghost of Hope. Slow it down and put the Star Wars theme over it. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I actually like that. You get an A for effort. I mean, it's a good roast. Come on, give Sarah some props. All that text, yet yeah, MW3 is more active than MW2, LMFAO. Uh, I would counter that with uh, my earlier part of this video going over the Steam charts. Bro, it's a fucking VTuber. Well, I guess that shows you how Pekka Pro gets their opinions. I chose to read it. It wasn't worth it. In my opinion, MW3 is essentially a $70 DLC plus an overhaul to MW2, which is good because the changes make it a pretty good game. That's a valid take. I wouldn't say that's invalid, but to some people like myself, it isn't different enough to be worth $70 to me, and so I choose to skip it this year. Oh, I see now. They're saying it wasn't worth it as in MW3 wasn't worth it. Sorry, I thought they were talking about my comment or my reply. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's my opinion there too. It's a glorified $70 DLC, and that's not even hate. I fully understand why people who bought MW2 wouldn't want to buy MW3, because it's like literally the same game with some overhauls. I know that's kind of a popular thing to say about Call of Duty, that it like it's the same game every single year, but it's really not. This is the first year it's actually been like that. Even like comparing the OG MW2 to the OG MW3, the whole map philosophy in those two games is completely different. The created class is totally different as well, and the streak system is new. Whereas between MW2 and MW3, the new reboots, they had this whole carry forward system, and that kind of just exposes how much recycled content they had within MW3. And again, it only carries forward, it doesn't carry backwards, which if it carried backwards, well, then that would be a totally different story and I'd be fully on board. I would have loved to play the OG MW2 maps within the new MW2. The movement and the time to kill is way closer to the original MW2 in the MW2 reboot. Again, MW3 is not like OG COD. Holy shit. Blah, blah, blah. I agree, the MW3 story completely killed any hype for the MW4 campaign. It's not Sledgehammer Games' fault though, since they didn't find out that they were making a full game until a few months before launch. Activision is the one to blame. Well, it was leaked that it was 16 months, but yes, I 100% agree here, it is Activision's fault. I have never put the full blame on Sledgehammer Games, and I didn't even do that in my other post. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. MW3 is a bad Call of Duty, and we should call it a bad Call of Duty so it never happens again. What happened to Sledgehammer Games should not be repeated, which I'll be talking about in my next video actually, so stay tuned. Someone should tell the VTuber Deaf woman? Okay. Way too much time on their hands, Jesus Christ. Didn't realize the OG maps were ever promised for MW2. Michael G, I wonder what the title of the game is. I wonder what it's a reboot of. <laughs> no, it wasn't verbally promised. It's just the implication of the fucking title of the game. Like, it just baffles my mind that people do not want to accept MW3 as a DLC. The OG MW2 maps were clearly made before the MW3 2023 game came out. We saw them in Warzone. Like, come on, it does not take much effort to put two and two together. VTuber, opinion discarded. <laughs> Genuinely, all of it was essentially to say that they thought MW2 was better. Nope, didn't mention MW2. Other than me saying that it should have been DLC for MW2 instead of pretending to be a new game, everything was actually criticism here. And like, I can have that opinion. If MW3 was an expansion pack, we would have all of MW2's maps at launch, plus all the OG MW2 maps all at once as well. We went to be trickling the Modern Warfare 2022 maps into Modern Warfare 2023 throughout the whole life cycle, we wouldn't be essentially making the previous COD not worth buying. When a new consumer comes into the franchise and like they want to choose between Modern Warfare 2022 and 2023, they're most likely going to look at the map selection. The fact that a good portion of Modern Warfare 2022's maps are being ported over into the next game for like completely free renders Modern Warfare 2022 kind of pointless to get, at least to them. Why would you buy the game that has seemingly less content? So yeah, I would rather we not make the previous COD irrelevant. Call of Duty games deserve to be timeless. Trying to justify this sabotage is just very weird to me. Oh yeah, we got Stuart Little back here again. I told you guys he came from these quotes retweeters. Absolute fucking yappa. Why TF do he even care so much? Fucking nerd. Dude, he did two replies under the same post essentially saying the exact same thing. COD Watched says no one has any proper criticism in quotes. Then there's me coming along here posting criticism and the response by everyone else is, nah, that's too much. Brainlit moment. 
Good point. Oh, we have another from Stuart Little. He just doesn't shut the flip up with his dog shit takes. Don't you have Dallas here saying, oh, this was the fucking shizzo that uh, implied that I was right wing and racist because I told them to get a job lol? Is this not the same person who sent me the video with the guy saying the N word and to get a job? Like what? Then again, maybe this was someone else, but I definitely linked him the video that that other person sent me. So, I mean, if you think I implied it, maybe you should have said something something or maybe looked at what the other people were saying when you're saying the exact same thing back to me like all right twitter moment so yeah that's what bob is cooking up let's see what ghost of hope had to say about this no wonder mw2 shit the bed the fans of the game would rather sit there sending 100 tweets defending the game rather than actually playing it wow incredible good takeaway from my mw3 criticism i yeah, I was totally talking about MW2 this entire time. Oh yeah. Like he doesn't read what the topic of the discussion is. He sees one mention of MW2 and assumes the whole thing is talking about MW2. Can I remind you how much tweets there were here about MW3? Like, I thought that was a big point that people were making. I guess not. I guess we just can't read. And because we can't read, let's see what the replies are to this that think I'm talking about MW2 now. Smith says, to be fair, the game only really shot the bid because there was a change of leadership after Mono for 2019 in like 2021, I think. Hope says, no, there wasn't. Same leadership on both Mono for 2019 and Mono Warfare 2. People liking Mono for 2019 emboldened them to do what they did on MW2. Both games have the same philosophy of catering to shit stains. 74 likes. Now, as someone who has about, I think, 20 days on both Mono for 2019 and MW2, Ooh, no, I, I don't think they do have the same philosophies. They let a lot more movement fly rampant in Mono for 2019, like they didn't patch out the slide canceling, they didn't patch out the double jump to the side strafe bunny hopping, drop shotting was super fast. The only similarities really were just the no red dots on the minimap and dead silence as a field upgrade, but they even changed dead silence in MW2, like they actually nerfed it again, which was a great thing in my opinion. If you even played in Mono for 2019 for a split second, you would have known that dead silence was extremely OP in that game. Who knew having silent footsteps in a very footstep heavy game would be overpowered? Apparently not this guy. But yeah, MW2 plays very differently from Mono for 2019. These guys are kind of just mad because they can't do their run around like a chicken with their head cut off playstyle, or at least they couldn't do it 24-7. Uh, getting three kills in a life, or four or five kills I, I should say, just to charge up your dead silence perk in Mono for 2019. Apparently that just wasn't easy enough for them. God, these guys are just fucking jokes. Anyway, Clayton responds here saying, and it sucks because Marvel 2019 became an accidental gem for the SD community. I mean, to be fair, uh, a lot of Infinity Ward games have been very popular with the SD community. Ghosts was extremely popular with the SD community because of the very large and open maps. The original MTV trilogy was very popular with SD as well because Infinity Ward have always had this poor sort of map design. The only game that really doesn't from them is Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare was more of a three lane map design, sort of of rule of thumb. Anyways, I told my friends that IW was gonna essentially make another MTV 2019, but double down on everything bad about it. And they just went, if that's the case, then SD should still be good. That's crazy. See, I actually am really into Search and Destroy and Cyber Attack, more so Cyber Attack. I love Cyber Attack. And even uh, Prisoner Rescue and VIP Escort back in Cold War. VIP Escort was a great mode as well. I hope it comes back. But it's so weird because these people talk about these game modes as if they're less skilled, but like, I think Search and Destroy is one of the more most skilled modes in Call of Duty. What a world we live in. Well, to be fair, I wouldn't want to play it either, even if I pretended to like it. VTX says, I like their video on MW2. Aw, thank you very much. Because there are good things about MW2, like the camo system. But these are such subjective complaints, Jesus. Well, guess what? They're my subjective complaints. As an MW2 fan, MW3 is straight up an update. Well, yeah, it should have replaced it, and all of the MW2 maps and modes, including DMZ, should be in MW3. Now, to be fair, that's kind of what I also want. I was really wanting MW2 to get a year or two of support. The perk system needed an update, and I just would have loved to see that MW3 perk system implemented into MW2. However, I don't think Sledgehammer Games does the best with, uh, DLC perk updates and new streaks over time and whatnot. Even Treyarch does that, and I'm really not a fan of it. I think it just creates a ton of imbalances. For example, Sledgehammer Games added the Ghost Vest to 
MW3 mid life cycle. When they did this, they actually buffed the regular ghost perk in MW3 as well. This MW3 ghost perk at launch was perfectly balanced, like you actually had to be moving for it to activate. However, after this update, they made it so you have to just nudge your little left stick at just a little bit tiny bit so that you're hidden. So they sent us back to square one. But yeah, subjective complaints? Well, yeah, it was my opinion. <laughs> What'd you expect? It was my criticism. Anyway, MDV2 was garbage. Big Sam here says, I'm 99% sure that even though I flip and hated MW2, I have more playtime on that game than most of the IW defenders, which is flipping crazy to even say out loud. You sure about that? I, I mean, uh, I, fuck dude, I have over 20 days played on that game. I wouldn't go around saying that just to some random stranger now. And even if he did have more playtime than me, I'm already level 900. Like that's way more than enough to say that I played the game. That's way more than enough to say that I learned it. The level of gatekeeping here it would just be very petty. Pickle says that TTK aside, Mono for 2019 had a solid core to it. Graphics were incredible, weapon handling and sound design were very solid. Opinions aside, it was objectively a well-made game. MW2 is the absolute opposite. It feels like a step back in every way, from gunplay to map design to art direction. Oh really? I feel like gunplay is very subjective. Map design, that's an interesting one because I thought MW2's map design kind of listened to the feedback Infinity Ward was getting during Mono for 2019. During Mono for 2019, we were saying that the maps had too much fat on them and all the MW2 maps, they are just, ooh. Ooh, there's not a single bad one. We don't have a Piccadilly anymore. Some people say that Border Crossing is the worst, right, in MW2, but like, dude, that map has gotten updates. Personally, I didn't mind the exploding cars, but they nerfed the shit out of those exploding cars. Now, like, when one explodes, they don't have a chain reaction anymore. Border Crossing is just a King of the Hill style map. I guess if you don't play it like a King of the Hill style map, maybe you're just not playing the game right. But then again, you can also flank around the outside lane, the very thin road. And when you do that, you can catch a lot of people off guard and get a lot of kills. But yeah, lowest I'd put border crossing is probably like C minus in like a tier list. Simon says I tried to play it again when MW3 was broken a few weeks ago, hopped into the game and I immediately hopped off after remembering that god awful perk change system that they had. <laughs> hopped on Cold War for the evening instead. Yeah, sorry, the perk system was not that bad. Snake says I have like 130 hours in MW2 and I gotta say it's dog shit. 130 hours? Wait, let me, let me just calculate real quick what 20 days equates to in hours. 20 times 24, 480 hours. Let's divide that by 130 and we got 3.69. Dude, I had 3.69 times what you had in MW2, okay? Where I had around 20 days, you had around 5.4 days, which I guess is fair. You can have whatever opinion you want, really. 5.4 days is enough in my opinion. But then again, maybe you just didn't learn it as much as I did. At least I never had shit netcode as well as packet burst and latency variation happening uh, since launch with MW2. Oh yeah, MW3 has had a lot of netcode problems, unfortunately. It's awful. But yeah, MW3 has had this constantly. Doesn't matter how much content Sledgehammer Games gives, major and consistent latency issues in the MP game is absolutely horrible. That ruins the entire experience. Fuoko says, I love how people bring up the argument of, why don't you play it then? As if anyone actually goes back to play unsupported CODs for anything other than the co-op aspects or campaign. Now here's the thing. I actually did play Mono for 2019 for two years. I played a lot of Cold War. I got six days in the multiplayer and another six days or so, a little bit more than six days, I believe, in the zombies. So I spent a good chunk of time on Cold War, but I do think it is nice that you can still play the previous Call of Duty game. The only problem that I have with Mono for 2's case is that they made it super annoying to log into. Mono for 2 really should have just been a separate game so that you could actually hop on and have fun. I really don't like this Call of Duty hub. Lameo, hope. Top three worst COD in history. Reddit MW2 fanboys are worse, trust me, LaMail. Well, damn us. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not on Reddit, so I guess I won't ever see what they have to say. Tim says, not a huge COD player, but wasn't MW2 their best-selling game ever? I believe it did that. It would sell uh, what their expectations were, and then MW3 came along, and leaks said that it underperformed by 30%. Again, not saying that that's actually determining a game's value. I wouldn't say that, but I know some people like this guy would. John says, I stand by this 1,000%, but if you take away the weapon, 
weapon, smoke, and obstruction, MW2 had the best gunplay in any COD ever. Hit registration was so crisp. Modern Warfare 2019 was close, but every gun beamed and made it kind of a uh, watered down. Yeah, dude, I didn't really have much of a problem with it. Modern Warfare 2's like smoke obstruction, I guess. I also just kind of put an optic on every single gun. It only really sucks when you have like really bad recoil. Cage says, I mean you walk more than you shoot in that game, so I think this tracks perfectly. Sure, totally, bro. GeForce Gordon says that they either sit there tweeting or sit in one room for a whole match. Probably both at the same time. Sorry, I, I think there's a word for this. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of tweets that are kind of like this, and uh, oh, uh, what's the word? It's, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, oh yeah. Casuals. These guys are all casuals. Casuals with a big ego. I had 14 days played on MW2. I actually liked it. Hell yeah, let's go. Shiggy Diggy says that I'm sure they were ADSing a doorway while typing all of this. Professional Hater says, question mark, question mark, question mark. They were bashing MW3, calling it a DLC and not praising MW2. MW2 was ass and needed the DLC that would have been MW3. Well, it looks like some people are seeing through Ghost of Hope's lies. Like, even though he's still disagreeing with me, at least he's seeing through this guy. Jason says bro is complaining about a better game lol. Well I mean if your head wasn't up your you know what you would just know that subjectivity is a thing. Get this Vanguard was more fun than the shit show of MW2. That shit without Warzone would have sent the entire COD fanbase to the ground. Aha. Uh -huh. Sure. Aiden says that that guy is an actual cretin. I remember arguing with him over the course of like two days back in Vanguard about uh skin realism. Aw, poor Muffin. Well, it seems like he remembered none of it because I was arguing for immersion, not realism. Jabba also says that isn't he talking about MW3, not defending MW2? Hey, you got it, man. At least someone has some eyes to read. I mean, this is just a classic Ghost of Hope moment right here. He has no clue what's going on, makes up a story in his head, and just retweets it. With someone that has as much as 63,000 followers, I'd expect a lot more from you. But oh well, it just looks like your own followers have to expose you for me. Again, I'm blocked, so I can't defend my own takes. Lim says, thinking COD is a good game in any aspect means these people have fried brains. Well, I, I don't know what you're doing following Ghost of Hope when he's a Call of Duty leaker and a huge fanboy of MW3, but like, <laughs> all right. Exastar says, wow, what a loser mentality from you. Dude says why he liked MW2 and you're basically like, Lameo, fluff that guy. Get fluffed, lol. Damn, dude, unfortunately, this guy didn't also read my take, but at least he's defending someone who has a different opinion. So props to you. And then we have one from my friend Gravity. Hey, 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 Dutch gang. We come full circle. You love to see it. MF acts like you have to be playing the game 24 seven to be able to enjoy it. Judging by your average of 45 tweets a day for three years and four months. Whoa, Grab's doing some research here. You don't like anything other than Twitter. MW2 and MW3 both suck straight uh, taint, but your logic is embarrassingly flawed. Yes, sir, he lacks the ability to read. And through that, he spreads misinformation and hatred. So I ask you guys, the viewers, what do you think of this? Is this something we really need in the COD community? Or are these specific big influencers trying to stir up drama on Twitter so that they can stay relevant, even at the cost of breaking YouTube's own TOS? I mean, over 70 dislikes on a tiny channel like mine two years ago? That's rough, buddy. That's a weird superiority complex you got there. So so now that I've exposed the Ghost of Hope and all his little snarky lies once and for all, I think it's time I owe you all a proper conclusion, a little bow tie to wrap all this neatly together. The problem I've seen over these past few weeks has rooted a lot of itself in a bandwagon of hatred. Big influencers that dislike Modern Warfare 2 seem to want to drag others down to their level in the least constructive ways possible. You could say, in my opinion, Modern Warfare 3 is kind of a mess, and their response is, get a job. Bob, you're an MW2 moron that barely plays COD. I would rather die in Minecraft than play MW2 for a second year. And when someone asks for genuine MW3 criticism, because they don't see anything other than surface level takes online, you respond with a bunch of bullet points. It's all easily organized. And what happens next? You get blocked by the person that asked. You get quote tweeted again by the same two people saying, heh, no wonder MW2 shit the bed. Those players would rather send 
100 tweets defending the game instead of playing it. When my post had nothing to do with MW2, it was MW3 criticism, things that I dislike about MW3 because I was asked what is actually bad about MW3. And then there's others like Bob Network being leeches, just adding nothing to the conversation, aka literal yappage. Too long, didn't read. Did I ask? It wasn't even a reply to you. If I was hypothetically a Bob Network UK clone, in this scenario, I would have quote tweeted his quote tweet saying, too short, grow a few inches. Like, come on, that's the most unhelpful, sour shiz you could think of saying in the moment to get a few Twitter impressions, right? Like, do you not care about your public image or how your actions influence others? What do you think is going to happen when you continuously degrade someone over weeks on end? A Twitter following your guys' size should be thinking about this more than I do. So hopefully this video exposed what unhelpful, toxic behavior is. If you, the audience here, sees it, discourage it. Don't send hate back, but let them know that they're being cringe. Shame low effort yapping and superiority complex morons that like hate bombing, and losers that block others but continue to quote tweet their posts, literally talking behind people's backs in public. That's petty as fuck. You're an actual walking L. Skibbity toilet riz right there, my dude. You can't take the heat, so you resort to low blows and mindless drones to do your bidding. Cope harder, please. You won't see me blocking anyone over a Call of Duty opinion. To get that butt hurt means you're chronically online and can't have other people shattering your paper thin skin. Grow a backbone, ghost of hope, or remain the ghost that copes on Twitter day by day without one. See ya, Mike Drop. Oh, and I expect the diss track sometime soon. I'll see ya then. Bye bye.